Hello and welcome to today's video. In this video, we're going to have a look at an application of integration. As you might imagine, integration has lots and lots of possible applications, many of them in the engineering sciences, many of them also in finance and related fields. Today, we're going to have a look at one application that is related to your specific field or to parts of your specific field. We're going to look at progressive income tax. So this is the title of this section here. Application, progressive income tax. And that's something that you will all have to deal with sooner or later. If you pay income tax, then there's mostly two tax rates that you will be interested in. One is the effective tax rate. That's the average tax that you pay on your income. So the total tax divided by your total income. And then there's the marginal tax rate. The marginal tax rate is the rate that you pay for each additional unit of income. So when you consider working more, for example, and in return, hopefully getting paid more, then the marginal tax rate would be of interest for you because that would determine how much of that additional income would remain with you and how much you would have to pay to the government in taxes. And usually this marginal tax rate changes with income. In many, many tax systems around the world, um, there is a certain amount of income that would be tax free at least as far as income tax is concerned. And then the marginal tax rate starts to increase with increasing income up to a certain point. And we're going to consider an example of such a taxation system today. So let's make a few quick notes before we start doing that. As I said, um, for income tax, we distinguish between two tax rates. One is usually called the effective or average tax rate. And that would be your total tax divided by total income. And the other one is the marginal tax rate. And the marginal tax rate is the tax that you pay for each additional unit of income. So that's the tax rate for each additional unit of income. Usually, this marginal tax rate changes with the income, and that is called a progressive tax. Now let's take an example to illustrate that point. So consider the following example. Let's say X is the income of an individual measured in thousands of euros. And we'll only consider yearly income here because that is what the tax is based on usually. 
Now, the tax system works like this. For income below 20,000 euros, you don't pay any tax. Once you start earning more, so for each euro from 20,000 euros on, you pay a tax and the tax rate increases up to a total income of 80,000 per year. And at that point, we have reached the maximum tax rate. So then it's going to be fixed once again. So the rule is in our example, the following. For income between, let's say, 20,000 euros and 80,000 euros, a marginal tax rate of my tax rate is going to be 10% or dot one plus x divided by 200 so that rate applies and what that means in particular is um, the rate starts at 10 percent plus and it starts at 20,000 euros so x is 20 then so it's 20 over 200 and that means what we get is 10% plus 10% so that's 20% so 20% is the minimum tax rate that you pay in your income provided you earn at least 20,000 euros and then only for each euro from 20,000 and above so the first 19,999 euros are free tax free um, and then that rate increases and in this uh, example it increases steadily continuously it doesn't jump um, until we have reached an income of 80,000 euros so it increases up to 10% plus 80 over 200 and that is dot one plus dot four so we get 50% so 50% is the maximum tax rate in our example. And that's the third point of our regulations here. Um, for income above 80,000 euros, the marginal tax rate is fixed at 50%. So in mathematical terms, what does that mean? We can come up with a function that describes the marginal tax rate. We call that function T. And that's a function defined on the income in thousand euros. So that uh, ranges from zero to infinity excluded. And it maps to a tax rate. The tax rate starts at 0% uh, and it can go up to 100%. We will not consider higher tax rates here. So yeah, that maps to the interval from 0 to 1. Now the first part here, that is the income. The domain is the income. And the codomain is the marginal tax rate. And now this function tx has to be defined in the following way. t of x is zero, as long as the income is between, between zero and 20,000 or less than 20,000. So x is between zero and 20. That means we have zero for x 
between zero and less, strictly less than 20. We get 10% plus X over 200 for incomes between 20,000 and 80,000. So X between 20 and 80. And we get 50% for incomes that are higher than 80,000. So this is the piecewise definition of our marginal tax rate. And if you want to try to plot the graph, then you'll see that looks uh, approximately like this. So what do we have here? Let's see, this is 20, 40, 60%, so that's a tax rate of 20%, 40%, 60%. I want to say here we have the income in thousands of euros. So this is 10,000, this is 20,000, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and so on. Then what does the graph of T look like? Well, first, we don't pay tax at all. So between zero and 20, the tax rate is zero right here. Then at 20, the marginal tax rate jumps up to 20%. So we start here at this point. And then it steadily increases in an affine linear way until at an income of 80,000, it hits 50%. So at 80,000, we have the 50%, that 50% mark that would be here. So that's the highest tax that could apply. Now we hit that tax here at 80%. So in between those two, we have an increase. So the function looks like this. And then the marginal tax rate stays constant at 50%. So this is the function T of X. And now, of course, the question is, how much tax do we have to pay for a given income? How do we compute that? So here's what we want to know. What is the total tax? Let's call that capital T of X paid on an income of X. Now, how do we answer that? Let's start with a simple example. Let's first assume that X is 60. So we earn 60,000 euros a year. How much tax do we have to pay in that case in total? In our graph, that means 60 is here at that point. So this is our marginal tax rate that applies for that last euro we earned. And of course, for anything that we earned below that mark, a different marginal tax rate applies, right? So for the 14th thousand euro, this tax rate here applies. For the 13th thousand euro, the tax rate here applies and so on. So effectively, what we have to compute is the area below this graph here. So this here is capital T of 60. And of course, if you hear area computations, then you will think of integrals. So that is how we can compute T of 60. We just need to integrate over our small t of x dx from zero to 60. And in that case, that's easily done. Small t is piecewise defined, so we can uh, split up the integral at the split points for the definition of t. We integrate from zero to 20 over zero dx, and then from 20 to 60 over 
dot one plus x over two hundred dx. And can of course solve that integral. The integral over zero is zero, so that part vanishes. The other part is dot one times x plus x squared over two times four hundred uh, times two hundred, so that's four hundred. And the boundaries are 20 and 60. So let's see if we uh, evaluate that. We start with the um, upper bound, 60 here. So 10% times 60, that is six. Plus six squared is 36. So 60 squared is 36. And then add two zeros, 3,600 divided by 400. And then we subtract, well, let's use the boundary 20 here, the lower bound. We subtract uh, two plus, and 20 squared is 400. So that's 400 over 400. And what we get here, if we do the computations, well, this is six, uh, 3,600 over 400 is 36 over four, which is nine. Then we have minus two and 400 over 400 is of course one. So altogether, six plus nine minus three, that's six plus six or 12. So we have to pay a total tax of 12,000 euros on our income. And of course, we can generalize that idea um, and try to compute the general formula. So let's do that as well. Now, if you want to compute t of x, what we have to do is we have to compute the integral from zero to x of t. Well, we can't say t of x, so uh, let's use xi of xi d xi. And to do that, we have to make a case distinction. Um, again, for income that is less than 20, t of x is equal to the integral from 0 to x over 0 dx, so that is 0. For income between 20 and 80, we basically just did the necessary computations. So 20 less or equal to x less or equal to 80. We can compute uh, t of x as the integral from 20 to x over that function t. And as we've just seen, this is the integral from 20 to x over dot one plus xi over 200. And that is equal to dot one xi plus xi squared over 200 from 20 to x. And again, um, let's substitute the boundaries here. And then we get dot one times x plus x squared over, oh, sorry, over 400, of course, not 200, over 400. Um, minus two, minus uh, one, so minus three altogether. So this is the formula for income between 20 and 40. And finally, um, for income above 80, We get capital T of X equal to first the integral from 20 to 80 over that formula. And then the integral from 80 to X over our marginal tax rate again. 
we did the computations already for that first part here. We can just use that formula here um, up here and use x equals 80 for that one. So what we get here is then um, dot one times 80 plus 80 squared over 400 minus three plus um, and for income above 80,000 euros, the marginal tax rate T is dot five. So we get that. And of course we can integrate that. So let's see, 10% um, of 80 is of course eight minus three is five. Then 80 squared, eight squared is 64. So we have 6,400 divided by 400 plus, um, and this integral here, that is dot five X from 82 X, oh sorry, not X of course, Xi. So what do we get? Um, 64 over four is 16, 16 plus five is 21. So we have 21 here. Plus, and if we evaluate that part here, um, then we get dot five X minus dot five times 80, which is 40. So altogether we have uh, 21 minus 40, that is minus 19, so dot five X minus 19. And that means we have found a formula, a general formula for capital T. Again, piecewise formula here, so it's, it's going to be zero for X between zero and 20, strictly less than 20. It's going to be x squared over 400 plus dot one x minus three for values of x between 20 and 80. And finally, it's going to be dot five times x minus 19 for values of x above 80. So as you can see, integration provides the formula for the total tax and that can be easily computed if we know the income. So this has been our first application of integration. Um, we'll see one more application that deals with a problem in economics in one of the later videos. And as usual, I hope I'll see you then.